I want to talk to you about prosperity today, and I'd like to talk to you about stinking thinking when it comes to prosperity. Now, I want to share some things with you from a spiritual perspective. I'm Pastor Danny Davis, and I welcome you to the Winning Concepts. In Job chapter 36 and verse 11, the writer says, If they obey and serve God, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. You see, uh, there's promises throughout the Bible concerning success and prosperity in this life, not in the life to come, where, when you're going to have a mansion and, and you're going to be a part of, of God's infinite wealth and prosperity, but there's promises throughout the Bible of prosperity in this life. Now, we find a story in Mark chapter 10 of a rich young ruler that came to Jesus and he wanted to be an apostle. Now, if you think about it, this man would have gone down in history 2,000 years later we would know his name because he was a godly young man that wanted to be one of the disciples, one of the apostles of the gospel. And he came to Jesus, and Jesus immediately picked his spirit up. He was living right. He was walking right. He was talking right. And as he began to tell Jesus how he followed the scriptures, the Bible says great, Jesus felt great love for that young man. Finally, Jesus looked at him and said, you lack one thing. He said, forsake everything you've got. Take all of your wealth, sell it, and give it to the poor, and come follow after me, and you can be one of my disciples. He was given an opportunity to go down in history. We would know his name right now, 2,000 years later. He was given the opportunity to go down in history as one of the apostles, but the Bible says when Jesus told him to, sell his great, to give his great wealth away and, and give it all to the poor, well, the Bible says the rich young ruler went away very sorrowful, for he had great wealth. He didn't want to give up his cush lifestyle. Well, the apostle Peter came to Jesus, and he was kind of discouraged after he watched this happen. He said, Jesus, we've forsaken all to follow after you. We gave up houses, lands. We gave up everything you talked about to come be one of your disciples. And Jesus told the apostle Peter something I want to share with you today. It's found in Mark chapter 10, verse 29 through 30. Jesus answered Peter and said, I say to you, there's no man that's left houses, lands, family, uh, anything materially, that it will not come back 100-fold in this lifetime. He said, but with persecution. That was the clause he put in there. And Jesus said, after that, you'll have eternal life. So why did Jesus put the clause of persecution in when he told the apostle Peter, everything you've given up to come follow me is coming back in this present time or in this lifetime 100-fold. Now, Jesus wasn't talking about when Peter got to heaven. He said in this present time, in other words, in this lifetime is the actual Greek rendering of what he told Peter. In this lifetime, whatever you give up to be a follower of Christ will come back 100-fold with persecution. Why did Jesus say there would be persecution if you're willing to forsake all for the gospel's sake? Well, I'm going to tell you exactly why. It's because whenever you start having success in your life, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, the haters come out of the woodwork. I think back years ago, I had a little storefront church, and I was praying at the altar one day, and God began to speak to me. He said, Danny Davis, I'm, I'm going to give you a voice to millions of people. I'm going to put you on television all over the world. I, I heard that just as clear as you hear my voice. I talked to you today. God said, I'm going to raise you up and give you a worldwide television ministry and over time, I found myself on nine major television networks. I was preaching all over the United States and all over the world. I could walk down the street in New York, and people would run across the street and shake my hand. People were excited because God gave me a million-dollar television ministry. Well, I was excited about that. It was the hundredfold promise that, that he had given Peter. It was working in my life. But guess what started happening right away? The moment I started having success... Haters began to come out. I could look on the internet. People were calling me a shyster. People were calling me a crook. People were attacking me. I hope he's enjoying his wealth. He's going to burn in hell. You know, just critical things. But the shocking thing about it, much of what was being said was being said by believers that did not believe in prosperity. I'm going to share the statistics with you very quickly today. 50% of all born-again believers think it's a sin to have too much success. Can you imagine that? One out of every two Christians thinks there's something wrong with great prosperity. 50% believe in the prosperity message. I happen to be a prosperity preacher. I believe in the hundredfold return. 
I believe whatever I'm willing to give up for the gospel's sake, if, I, if Danny Davis keeps his heart right, God's going to bless me right out of my socks. Just like it says in the book of Job, if I obey and serve him, I'll spend my days in prosperity and my years in pleasures. I want to share three things with you that you need to do if you choose to be a Christian and a believer in prosperity. Here's key number one. You have to start by choosing your school of thought. I happen to believe people that don't believe in prosperity are still going to make it to heaven because they believe in Jesus, but they're not going to have the success they could have had in this life because they've got a mental block. Here's key number two. If you want to walk in this zone of blessing that Jesus promised us in Mark chapter 10, you've got to start confessing the hundredfold return. Danny Davis didn't say it. Jesus said it. He said, if your heart's right, Whatever you're willing to give up for the gospel's sake in this present time or this lifetime, it's coming back 100-fold. And here's the third thing you need to do. First of all, you have to start expecting people to persecute you because there are jealous and envious haters everywhere you turn as a believer if God is prospering you. Well, I want to end this little talk by giving you a life key today. It might sound a little simple. But here's my life key. Wake up. Come out of it. Snap out of it. Wake up. Uh, it's all right to have a little bit of heaven, this side of heaven, to go to heaven in. I'm Danny Davis, and I hope this has been a help to you today.